And now for our penultimate reading, um, we have Sergio, Sergio Lobejan Santos, who's a poet, translator, and academic, and also a research associate on this project. And he collaborated with um, Fanula Sweeney, who's senior lecturer in American studies um, at the university here. Um, sadly, Fanula can't be with us, um, so Fiona has kindly volunteered to read um, some of the, uh, I think your two poems that you have. Uh, translations, yeah. Yeah, two, two translations uh, from, from the Spanish, which is um, Sergio's uh, first language. Um, and also, we have one recording of Fanula, Fanula reading as well. Yes. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to thank three women for their generosity. First of all, Fiona Santos. Uh, it's it's an honor uh, to have um, uh, the translation by by her. Um, also, Re Rebecca Johnson for putting this second half of uh, the presentation together. That was really hard work. And uh, for putting me in touch with uh, Fenola. Fenola has been really kind to me, uh, not only translating eight of my poems. Don't worry, I'm only going to be reading two of them. Uh, <laughs> And uh, also producing uh, um, variations on, on the translations. Um, she also sent me um, recordings of those two uh, new compositions. So I'm going to read the first poem, uh, which is from a collection of short stories and poems I wrote a few years ago. And the poem is called Fotogramas. Uh, which uh, is in Spanish for frames. Fotogramas. Cuadros emborronados desfilan sobre un muro de tela porosa. Tratan de romper su estatismo en una luz cromático de fotones. Son solo juegos de luces, lo sé. Pero aún así no dejo de pensar que esos actores de la inacción, esos parajes ya abandonados, son tan míos como las puertas de las que intento oír cada día. Frames. Blurred pictures parade on a wall of porous fabric. Static ceremony in a chromatic avalanche of photons. It just gains a shadow, I know. But I still cannot stop thinking that these artists of inaction, those places already abandoned, are as much mine as the doors through which I try to flee every day. Framed. Faint pictures figure the wall, and yet, in all the pageantry of impervious text, breaking faith in lost logic, in the fall of metaphor, imagine, I, a game of light, shadowed in knowing mastery of the glance at the sight of inscription, the door of escape to shallow civility, all ready, all ready for I with my needle, to sew into ground, a stitch in the ditch where the bones and the stones once laid, side by side, for so much depends, doesn't it, now that you have wandered, on the greyness of stones, the certainty of lapse, the slight weight of memory, only a gram or two or three, enough at least to frame an ending that is mine, provisionally, to forego the absolute of your singularity, if endy, a turco for all I know, a dog, further west than even suspicion would allow, chromatically curtailed in the crook of an eye, the turn of a tongue, no blue here, no easy cradling. The second poem is entitled Grutas Oceanicas. Uh, the title in English is uh, Ocean Caves. Grutas Oceanicas. Parado frente al mar, Afina sus ojos para observar las fuerzas que dan forma a esa masa furibunda que no conoce a nadie. Las olas saltan al compás de Selene, poniendo fin abrupto a su camino al romper contra la roca desnuda. Gramófonos de aguja caprichosa que degustan melodías polvorientas. 
Los promontorios se elevan orgullosos aún en su impotencia, como testigos mudos que acusan con pruebas a las mareas de incontables años de desgaste. Pesqueros abandonados reclaman un puerto en el que poder soltar su cargamento de reproches y suspiros sin razón ni dueño, de agravios que ya nadie recuerda si acaso serían suyos. En la orilla, un canto rodado se separa con violencia de una sombra diminuta, deslizándose por la superficie mientras busca un lugar en el que recuperar su momento de inercia. Como si ignorase que el único camino posible conduce a la fosa abisal, última parada a la desidia. El océano no conoce a nadie. Jamás hará distinciones entre visitas primerizas, viejos amigos que en su fidelidad siempre terminan regresando a su cadencia sincopada. Entre quienes están de paso, pero jamás volverán. Ocean Caves. Standing in front of the sea, sharpen your eyes to remark the forces that reshape that furious, unknowing mass. The waves start to the compass of the compass of Selene, abruptly ending their path in the break of bare rock, as gramophone needles taste dusty melodies. The promontories rise proudly even in their impotence, mute witnesses to the tides accused with the evidence of countless years of wear. Abandoned fishermen claim a port to release their cargo of reproaches and sighs without reason or title, of grievances unremembered even in the heart. On the shore, a stone skips along its own tiny shadow, sliding across the surface looking for a place in which to recover its moment of inertia, as if to deny that the only possible path draws downwards an idling last stop. The ocean knows no one, makes no distinctions between first visits and old friends who, in their fidelity, always end up coming back to its syncopated cadence, between those passing through never to return. Swan song. Sea eyes seek the splash of monsters, the furtive power of here be, mapped in anticipation. Beneath, a lapa still playing the line, Till three turns down, it comes to a stop, and a generation of flesh breaks on barren rock, in the spent fury of tide on feathers, a song worn mute through years of wear, as in the dust of a note the promontories rise, the cliff edge sharpening to accusation, and the pride of countless years waits again on time and tide. In the face of this new quickening, fishermen claim a port, forsaking that cargo of reproach, of grievance unremembered, 400 years and it's over in a blink in the sigh of the shore, where, out of sight, a grain of sand sheds its shadow, a break in time, sliding in search of a surface, a surfeit in which to recover its moment. What do you want, Sybil? Not what you think, not at all, not that inertia, that paid-for innocence, is mise en abîme the last stop. Intact here still the triumph of power over petition, and no distinction between the first meeting and the last, for old friends whose loyalty turns on the hinge of last cadence. I choose she, in anticipation. Pass to, pass through. It's only history. <laughs> 